This is Jerry Hash from the Hash Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And my client had a sacroiliac fusion 11 years ago. Uh, two screws were implanted behind the joint, uh, but in the, in the ilium and in the sacrum on both sides. And um, her current physical therapist and osteopath, am I correct, believe that it still moves? The osteopath believe that it's possibly still moving, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, I disagree and I'll show you why. Um, she does have pelvic asymmetry when she stands. The front of the right pelvis is higher and the back of the right pelvis is higher when she stands. But when she's supine, her leg lengths are equal and when we look at her in supine, it's rather subtle. So I can't say that it's higher. It's, it's too subtle for me to call it. But when she bends her knees, it gets interesting. So bend both knees and bring your feet together. All right. So with both knees bent, um, she is higher, this tibia is higher, and this femur is longer. Okay? And when she sits, we see the same thing. When she's sitting on a chair with her hips bent 90 degrees, we see that same asymmetry. So I'm going to suggest that um, there is a leg length difference on both sides. Again, the left femur being longer and the right tibia being taller. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is show you that her SIs are fused and then show you what we do about this asymmetry when she sits. So legs out straight, please. So when I test side to side movement, you can see that I can push the body a little bit and then the motion stops quickly. And now I'm trying to induce a passive force using more force than I usually do and there's no movement. I'm pushing uh, through, the, through the right side of her pelvis and the other side lifts up immediately. When that lifts up immediately, that's an indication that there's blocked movement in the SI joints. And I've taken up the slack and now I'm trying to spring by adding more force. I'm pushing with 15 pounds of force and there's nothing happening. I'm using even more force than that and there is no movement. And then on this side, I can push and the whole pelvis immediately raises. Okay, so it translates this movement into transverse plane movement. So I push to a stop point and now I try and spring it. There's no give. Let's have you on your stomach. So now I'm trying to do a superior spring test. There's no give at all. Okay, there's no give on the other side. When I try and do a side bending spring on the, on the sacrum, there's no movement. Um, when I try and do a forward rotation spring test, there's no give. When I try and do an inferior spring, there's no give whatsoever. Okay, and now I'm doing a lateral spring test. I'm on the sacrum. I'm trying to make it backward bend. There's no give. I'm trying to make it inferior glide. There's no give. And I'm on the top of the sacrum at S1 trying to make it forward bend. There's no give. So I conclude this SI joint is fused and that most is blocked on both sides. I even tested medial spring, lateral spring on the ischium. I tested forward spring on the ischium. No movement there at all. What do we do with this? Well, let's have you lie on your, let's have you sit in the chair, please. So sitting is uncomfortable for you? Mm -hmm. Yes, very. Okay. So in sitting with your feet together, we notice that you're taller on the, on the right side, just like when you were laying on your back, and we notice that this femur is longer. So we take five millimeter craft foam, okay? 
and we put that under your left sit bone and tell me how you feel. Yeah, it feels more balanced and okay. normal. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So the answer is that in sitting, we're going to have you sit on five millimeter craft foam. We'll cut this full sheet in half. I'll cut two of them so you'll go out the door with four of them. Okay. Keep one in your car. Yeah. Um, one on the dashboard so if you go to a restaurant you can take it with you. Okay. You have to somehow remember yeah. not yeah. to leave it in the restaurant. Yeah. 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 And then one for your desk. Mm -hmm. You work out of your home. Mm -hmm. So one for your desk there and mm -hmm. one for your sofa. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So go ahead and take it out. And there is one other thing that we can try, and that is this foam that we dip in rubber dip, so it'll hold up well. And we put that st straight up and down under the troll counter. What does that feel like? Mm. Not, Not the same the effect. Same. Not the same. Not the same uh -huh. effect. No, I feel like okay. there's still a little wonkiness. Okay, yeah. interesting. All right, so then we're going to go with that craft foam. Okay. All right, so um, you had this fusion, mm -hmm. uh, two screws on both sides done in Georgia. Yep, in 2009. Mm -hmm. And Vicki Sims went to the OR. Yes, and she adjusted me there. And she aligned your pelvis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I assumed the SI joint was being aligned, yeah. Uh -huh. I assumed that's what I needed. Okay, yeah. alrighty. Yeah. And it's a lot of controversy. You can't mm -hmm. really measure SI movement with your eyes. Right. And when you align the pelvis visually, it's how the pelvis moves with the, pel with the lumbar spine and with the trunk mm -hmm. and how it moves mm -hmm. on the hip joints. Mm -hmm. So it probably has nothing to do with aligning inside your SI joint. So it's right. not really necessary. Right. Um, so anyway, interesting. Thank you for letting me film this.